The solar system has a lot in store billions of years from today. Every planet will change in some major way, and not just because they'll get hotter as the sun becomes a red giant. Each world has unique factors in their environments that will create vastly different outcomes as the solar system ages. And none of these planets have such a unique future timeline as Mars. Welcome to the seventh episode of my Halcyonic System series, where I go over the systems of dead or dying stars. If you don't know, a Halcyonic System is a term I use to describe any planetary system orbiting a dead or dying star, whether that be a red giant, neutron star, white dwarf, or black hole. Similarly, any planet inside a Halcyonic System is called a Halcyonic Planet. I've already made two other videos about the future worlds of the solar system, a tour of Earth one billion years from today, and the far future of Saturn, respectively. Both these planets have one thing in common. As the sun expands, both of these worlds will begin to die. Earth's oceans will evaporate, and a runaway greenhouse event will be triggered a billion or so years from now, ending all life. And the gradual migration of Titan away from Saturn will eventually send the entire Saturnian system into chaos, flipping Saturn itself on its side and wrecking the Saturnian moons. More information about those events in the previous videos I mentioned, but Mars is nearly the complete opposite. Don't get me wrong, Mars, like all solar system worlds, will eventually be burnt to a cinder by the red giant sun if it isn't artificially prevented. But before that, things on Mars might actually get better. There are ways to prevent the sun from becoming a red giant and saving the solar system. That will be a topic for next week's video, Preventing the Death of the Solar System, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Everything I say in this video will be the natural future of Mars, assuming, for some reason, nobody does anything to prevent or even alter it. Assuming intelligent life is still around this far into the future, Mars, like the entire solar system, isn't going to have a natural evolution. And I am very confident that some form of intelligent life that can trace its ancestry back to humanity will still be around at this point. So, I don't even think the things in this video will actually happen. But since it's impossible to predict what intelligence will do, I'm sticking to assuming no intervention whatsoever and the natural evolution of Mars. I'll talk about this more in preventing the death of the solar system. But before Mars dies, it actually has a very rare opportunity almost no worlds in the solar system will get. It's pretty unlikely, but Mars could actually become habitable. But that's well over a billion years into the future. Before we talk about that, we have to talk about what comes before, because Mars's environment is in for some drastic changes over the next few million years. Somewhere around 50 million years from today, Mars's largest and innermost moon, Phobos, will pass through Mars's Roche limit and either crash into Mars or become a ring system. This ring system won't be very big because Phobos isn't very big. For comparison, Saturn's rings were formed when a large moon, potentially the size of Iapetus, was destroyed, and over 90% of the material never became a part of the rings because it was eaten by Saturn. So, the rings have less than half the mass of Saturn's smallest large moon, Mimas. If something similar happens with Mars, then this ring will be incredibly small and faint, and fade away very quickly. It'll only be barely visible from the surface, if at all, and very dark. It won't be anywhere near as impressive as the rings of Saturn today, or the future ring system of Neptune after the destruction of Triton, which is also a topic for another video. I can't find any estimates for how long this ring system will last before it decays like Saturn's will, but I can't imagine it'll be around for more than a few hundred million years. That's just a guess on my part, though. Mars's second moon, Diamos, is going in the opposite direction. It's currently moving away from Mars, and will only get further away as time goes on. I can't find out much else about its future. But Mars itself could be in for some very chaotic shifts over the next few million years. Like Saturn, Mars's future will be determined by its axial tilt. Mars's axial tilt currently sits at about 25 degrees, pretty similar to Earth's. But simulations show that Mars experiences much more drastic shifts in its axial tilt over time than Earth. At least it has in the past. So, Earth has the moon to moderate its axial tilt over very long timescales, but Mars has no such thing. So, Mars goes through much more drastic shifts in axial tilt than Earth. And Earth's axis shifting in part causes ice ages. So, assuming this keeps happening, Mars's environment is going to go through a lot. I found a lot of conflicting sources on this, but from the best I can tell, Mars's axial tilt can vary all the way from 0 degrees to 60, and potentially even up to 80, on a 2.5 million year cycle. If the highest number is correct, then Mars nearly flips on its side every 2.5 million years, like Uranus is today. Even if that number is much less than 80 degrees of tilt, this will still cause extreme and dramatic shifts in Mars's climate in the millions of years to come. There's some evidence that in the past, Martian polar ice caps expanded all the way to Valles Marineris, or the Mariner Valley. Mars as it is today is likely emerging from this Ice Age period, and will return to it in the next few million years. I haven't found anything that says this process will stop anytime soon, so we can assume it will continue for the next few billion years. Currently, Mars's ice caps are very small, but during Martian glacial maximums, a large percentage of the planet may be covered in ice, potentially enough to turn Mars from mostly red to mostly white. 
The equator likely remains ice-free, but lower latitudes could be covered in ice over and over again every few million years. However, after each passing ice age, less and less of the surface will be covered, due to the sun slowly warming. Phobos' rings will come and go, and over billions of years, the amount of ice will decrease slightly every time as the sun slowly warms up. More and more ice will evaporate, making the thin Martian atmosphere ever so slightly thicker. Despite popular belief, planets can and do host atmospheres without magnetic fields. Venus is the best example of this. It has no magnetic field to speak of, yet has the densest atmosphere of any rocky object in the solar system. There's also Triton, Pluto, and Titan, all three of which have atmospheres without magnetic fields of their own, though in the case of Titan, it's inside Saturn's magnetic field. As long as an atmosphere is replenished faster than it can be stripped away by solar radiation, then an object can hold onto an atmosphere even without a magnetic field. Being cold also helps, because there's not only less radiation reaching the object, but the atoms in the atmosphere are moving slower, making it harder to speed up and escape the object. While we don't know much about how the gradual warming of Mars will add to its atmosphere and how fast, it is possible that Mars' atmosphere will be created faster than it can be destroyed, leading to the atmosphere getting thicker over time. Though it's just as possible, it could only get thinner. Currently, Mars could go one of two ways. If it fails to replenish its atmosphere, it will eventually become airless as the sun warms up. Or, if it somehow keeps building up an atmosphere through the slow evaporation of ice and CO2, something interesting will happen. Also, despite what you may have heard, liquid water still exists on Mars today. There's strong evidence for underground reservoirs of water on the South Pole or Utopia Planitia. There's also been direct pictures of flow patterns on hills in the lowest parts of Hellas Basin that strongly suggest the presence of flowing liquid water in small underground rivers. Martian liquid water is still extremely limited. These aren't oceans, or even lakes or ponds. More like loose collections of small bodies of water stuck between rocks that very rarely manage to leak out onto the surface. The main reason there aren't large amounts of liquid water on Mars today is because of the atmosphere. It's too thin to host it. There simply isn't enough pressure to keep water liquid. Except for at the bottom of Hellas Basin and the Mariner Valley, where atmospheric pressures can get up to twice their normal densities. That's enough for liquid water, and that's why we see evidence for small amounts of flowing water in Hellas Basin. Assuming Mars' atmosphere does gradually thicken, the areas where liquid water is possible will only expand. Over billions of years, it could expand from Hellas Basin and the Mariner Valley to the cliffs of Noctis Labyrinthus and the Argyre Basin, and maybe to the low-lying plains of the Northern Hemisphere. But liquid water being possible and liquid water actually being there are two different things. Even if the Martian atmosphere gets dense enough that most or all of the planet has the right atmospheric conditions for liquid water, Mars still might not get oceans. By this point, there might not be enough water for oceans to form. Or maybe there might not be enough currently. Either way, the far future of Mars at a point a few billion years in the future is not yet known. But there is a possibility that billions of years in the future, Mars might get a second chance at habitability. Oceans may once again fill the dry basins of Mars. This is far from confirmed. It's also a possibility that Mars simply never gets an atmosphere thick enough for liquid water. And even if it does, it probably won't be anywhere near as thick as Earth's. Mars, even with liquid water, will still be far from a habitable place. It still won't have volcanic activity, so life most likely won't be able to form here on its own. Earth life at this point is also extinct. The sun has already become a full red giant, boiling away the last of Earth's oceans and the last life with it. Earth habitability and Mars habitability won't overlap. And as far as we currently know, life needs volcanic activity in some capacity to form. So, with Mars's lack of volcanoes, it might not get life even if it becomes perfect for it. Even if Mars becomes an ocean planet, I would guess it'll likely remain dead. And this period of potential habitability won't last long. The sun is still heating up. The gradual stripping away of Mars's atmosphere will slowly get faster, until eventually it outcompetes the melting ice caps adding more gases to the atmosphere. At this point, Mars will reverse. Its atmosphere will get thinner, with nothing left to replenish it. Over billions of years, the oceans will fade, and the atmosphere with it, if they ever formed in the first place. Mars will begin to meet the exact same fate as Earth and the Moon before it. It will heat up to hundreds and then thousands of degrees, and then the expanding Sun will get closer and closer. The Sun could potentially destroy four worlds as it expands. Mercury, Venus, and, though less likely, Earth and the Moon. But Mars will be spared. We don't know how big the Sun will get, but we do know that it will begin rapidly expanding in about 6 billion years. It will likely expand out to where Earth's orbit currently is, making the ultimate fate of Earth and the Moon uncertain. They could get consumed, or their orbits might have migrated away in this time, and they could survive the red giant phase of the Sun. Mars has always been far enough away, so we'll survive the Sun's red giant phase, but not unscathed. The Sun will completely melt Mars. 
Heated up to thousands of degrees and with all water and atmosphere lost, Mars will be a shell of its former self. It will have become hot enough to completely melt the surface, destroying its most iconic features, Olympus Mons and the Mariner Valley, along with everything else. Not even its red color will remain. But Mars has survived, and depending on how unlucky we got, it could be the last rocky planet in the solar system. Scorched and unrecognizable, but still intact. Mars will then continue to orbit the white dwarf sun for trillions of years to come. Over tremendously long scales, random stellar encounters will eventually destroy the solar system. We don't know how long this will take, but as the universe dies around it, we know that eventually, some stellar remnant will come close enough to the solar system to knock Mars out of orbit. We don't know when, we just know that statistically, it will happen. After this, Mars and the rest of the solar system planets unlucky enough to have survived the red giant phase will drift through the void for the rest of eternity, alone and dark in a dying universe. The future of the solar system can sometimes seem bleak, but there are things humanity can do to delay or prevent this future from occurring, and each planet has their own unique story for how they'll get to this point. Make sure to stay tuned for Preventing the Death of the Solar System, where I'll talk exactly about how we can prevent all this from happening. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out the rest of my Halcyonic System series, as well as my videos about space colonization.